We read in the second chapter of Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there came Magi from the east, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. And when they saw the infant child, they threw themselves down and worshipped him. And they presented unto him gifts. Christian tradition says that Caspar offered him the gift of gold. Melchior gave the gift of frankincense. And Balthazar presented the gift of myrrh. So take yourself back to that time and that place long ago. Can you imagine the Magi looking for and perhaps debating over the appropriate gift for this blessed child? I wonder if there was perhaps divine intervention in their final choice. So what's the plan, Cass? Well, we have to find something for everyone at the Christmas party. You know, something to remind them how wonderful they are, even when they feel discouraged. Mm, yes. Everyone's really stepped up and shown what they're made of. I am so proud of them all. Hmm, this incense smells good. What do you think? <laughs> incense always makes me sneeze. Hmm. We'll have to see if there's something else. <clears throat> what about this? Oh, what is it? Oh. I'm not sure, but it smells real good. That's, what do you think it is, Cass? That's myrrh, used by the ancients for its oh. healing powers. <laughs> Try some. Okay. Oh, yuck. Oh. Tastes terrible. I don't think you're supposed to eat it. Mm. Let's keep looking. <laughs> you know, going through this has really pulled us all together. Sometimes people don't realize the value of what they have until they're about to lose it. Yeah, that's true, you know, but uh, it seems like Everyone has stopped complaining. Hmm. Not everybody. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, Jude it, it, handed it, in his yeah. notice, as you recall. Oh, hmm. yeah. Old Grumpy. Uh, what a shame. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Perfect. Ooh. Perfect. Friends, That's I it. think we've found our gift. Hmm. Yes. Yeah.
shepherds why this jubilee why your joyous strains belong say what may the tidings be which inspired your heavenly song Both the shepherds and the magi were led to the infant child by the North Star, the star of illumination. Neither group knew where it was going, but they followed the star and it kept them on track. We all have a North Star. It happens to be the light of love within us. When we pay attention to it, when we follow it, it will take us exactly where we need to go. But when we don't, when we let fear and upset get in the driver's seat. Well, let's see what happens. I'm so confused. I'm sure she said go south and then west. She said take a left at the second turnoff. No, I don't know where we are. This map makes no sense to me. No, she said, Mel said that we would see a light at the top of a tall building to the east. <laughs> Let's face it, I think we are lost. Well, I haven't seen any light. I, I told you we should have the GPS checked before we left, but no. <coughs> no, it's a straight shot. Well, calm down. We'll find it. Wait, wait, wasn't that a light over there? No, I didn't see any light. <laughs> I didn't want to be late for this party, not after I you know, resign my position. I, I feel guilty enough as it is. Yeah, Jude. Great company spirit you showed there. <laughs> Deserting a sinking ship. Well, better sooner than later. Well, what about you? Well, why are you still there? What's in it for you? You know, I think that's been the problem with all of us. And probably what got our company in trouble to begin with. You know, I'm, I'm starting to see that it's not about what you get, get in life, but about what you give. I guess I've sort of seen the light. <laughs> and speaking of the light, there, there it is again. Don't you see it? No, I think you're hallucinating again. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Look, I'm not trying to get you upset, and I'm not trying to get us lost, and I'm not even trying to change your mind. All I'm saying is that what you get out of life is what you give to it. That's all. You know, you may be right about that. You may be right about that light, too. <laughs> yeah, look up there. Mel's house, right up ahead. <laughs> Yes, there it is. <laughs> and so they saw the light. The light of illumination, the light of love, the light of the divine that is who and what we are. And it is time for us to rekindle that flame, to reignite that light of love in our hearts and in our minds. It is time to do what we came here to do tonight in this beautiful candle lighting service. And as we prepare, and as we prepare, I want you to think about something. What might be driving you right now that keeps you from finding that light within you? What fear? What upset? What resentment? What false belief? What might be standing in the way of you seeing your light? I want you to think about that for a few moments. And then when we engage in this beautiful sacred ceremony, let the flame of your candle burn away whatever that is. So that you walk out of here tonight reinvigorated, reignited, on fire again for the fire of the divine that is within you. So before we have our ceremony, I have a couple of pieces of candle protocol. That's a really nice way of saying how not to spill wax on us or the pew or the floor. So what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, when it's time, you all have candles, by the way, in the pew pocket in front of you, so you should all have a candle. So our ushers are going to light a candle on the end and then you're going to pass the flame down the row. And we ask that the lit candle stays this direction and the unlit candle goes that direction. So the lit candle is always upright. That's the key. Keep the lit candle always upright. So even during the ceremony, if you would keep it upright, and even after the ceremony, for a few moments, while the wax cools off, if you would keep it upright. That way, the cleaning is less tomorrow morning. And we appreciate that. And so let us now begin. <laughs> 